Hi again, everyone. Today we're going to talk about units for concentration. So concentration is just a measurement of how many molecules are dissolved in so much of your solution. Remember, a solution is just a mixture, two or more compounds. However, in chemistry, we, deal, we mainly deal with water aqueous solutions. So i um, got this nice graphic here. Let's just take a look at it real quick. Concentration is equal to the amount of a solute. Remember that term, solute? It's a thing being dissolved. That's dissolved in a given quantity of solvent. Uh, the solvent is the, the component of a mixture that's in greatest quantity. So for us, it's usually going to be water. And then, yeah, the solvent's going to be a liquid most of the time. It doesn't have to be, but in chemistry, it usually is. And the units are going to be moles per liter. Um, okay, we'll talk about that's one way to measure the concentration. Here's an example how you would prepare a solution, right? So take your solid, convert it with the molar mass to figure out how many moles, you know, count up the atoms of the solv solute molecules are here. So that's what this is supposed to represent. Some solid down here, and we can count out how many moles are there, and then fill it up to this container up to the one liter mark. And then let's say there's three moles of this powder, then the concentration would be three moles per liter. Nice. Uh, you have to be a little careful. It's a little misleading this as I'm reading a little more carefully now. Concentration is properly defined as the amount of solute divided by the amount of solution, not the solvent, the solution. So remember, it's the total. That's what it wants. Solution is always a solute plus a solvent. That makes sense, right? So the solid takes up space. It has volume. When it dissolves in your solvent, the whole volume will be more than just the volume of the solvent. You can try it sometime. You can take um, your favorite mug, fill it to the brim with water, and start sprinkling in sugar, and it'll start to spill over, right? Because those crystals of sugar have volume as it dissolves, the total volume increases. So when we measure the concentration, we oftentimes want the total quantity in our denominator. That's important. So don't be misled, as I nearly was in that definition up above, or by a problem in the homework. Remember the concentration is going to be the amount of the molecule you're interested in, the solute, thing being dissolved, divided by the total the total solution, and the total is simply the solute plus the solvent. Okay, doesn't seem too bad, right? Well, here's where it gets a little tedious. <laughs> there are actually at least, at least five ways of measuring concentration, and we need to be comfortable with all five methods. Why are there five? Well, it's all about convenience. One way of measuring concentration is convenient for one scientist, but not for another. Well, let's talk about convenience for us. Here we're studying chemistry and we do chemical reactions. And our balance equations for those chemical reactions have units of moles, right? So you can say, hey, go and grab, I don't know, one mole of methane and two moles of oxygen. And you can do the combustion reaction to make, let's see, I think it's one mole of carbon dioxide and two moles of water, if I can balance it in my head. <laughs> Anyways, what's convenient to scientists is moles. We wanna count our molecules so we can do our chemical reactions properly. So when we measure concentration, we like to put the solute up on top, right? That's always gonna be our definition for concentration, solute divided by the total solution. But as we count out the solute, we wanna count in moles. And then our aqueous solutions, we'll probably just measure the volume and measure that in liters. And then when we do that, new idea deserves a new word, new term. We're going to call that the molarity, right? So up above, we had three moles of our solute. So concentration equals, well, let's just grab it here. It's the amount of solute. How are we measuring the amount? with the moles and divided by the amount of solution. How do we measure the solution? Well, here we decide to measure it in liters. And so our units are gonna have moles 
over liters. Isn't that silly? We drop the ES, abbreviate moles as MOL. However, we do that so frequently in chemistry, there's a single letter, capital M, that means moles divided by liters. Okay, so the capital M means two units, moles divided by liters. Okay, so if we, um, right, we had that solution with three moles. They didn't say what the solute was, just some molecule. And you had one liter of solution. Three divided by one is three. And you can put a capital M, or you can say three moles per liter. Yeah. So moles per liters, that's what we're going to typically use in chemistry. And so you might see this sample question on your next exam. Hey, how many grams of sucrose do you need to prepare one liter of a 0.1 M sucrose solution? Or you could say, how many grams of sucrose do you need to prepare one liter of 0.1 molar sucrose solution? Use dimensional analysis. So there's an old video I have about the procedure of unit conversion, dimensional analysis. You begin the procedure by saying, hey, what do you want? What do I want? I want to know how many grams of sucrose. So you put that on the right side, grams of sucrose. And then what do I know? Find some numbers. Ooh, I got 342, I got 1.00, and I got 0 0.1. One of those three numbers goes here. A general guideline is to begin with a single unit number. Okay, so 342, how many units does it have? It's got grams and moles, there's two units. 1.00, as a simple unit of liters. Cool, that's the one we want to use. Just to make sure, look at the other one, 0.1 M. That's not one unit. I know it's one letter, capital M, but this means 0.1 moles per liter. It's not a single unit, even though it's abbreviated with the capital M. So start with a single unit number. That's the 1.00 liters. What is it? It's the solution. Okay. So now what I need to do, that's step two. You know, find a digit, put it on the left side. What do you know? That's what we know, one liter of solution. And now step three is convert it. Find a conversion factor, cancel out liters, change it to grams, and also cancel out solution and change it to sucrose. Well, where do I have liters anywhere in the problem? Well, there's a G and there's an MOL. The capital M is hiding a liter right down in the denominator. So if you use concentration as a conversion factor, you can change the liters into moles. So we're told the solution has a concentration of 0.1 molar and we'll rewrite 0.1 molar as moles over liter. You can put a number one down here if you like. And what does concentration mean? Well, let's go take a peek at the definition again. There it is. Concentration is the amount of solute divided by solution. Solute divided by solution. So it's mole solute. But what's the thing being dissolved? The solute is sucrose. What's the solution? It's solution. <laughs> it's the total of sucrose plus water. Okay, so the liters of solution cancel out. And now we can calculate the number of moles of sucrose. Getting closer, but we don't want moles. We want grams. So we need to cancel out the moles and change them into grams. I need a conversion, conversion factor with a G and an MOL. You know that as molar mass. And this problem was kind. It actually gave us the molar mass. For every one mole of sucrose, there will be 342 grams. One mole weighs 342 grams. Cool, all right, multiply things out. Multiply across one times 0.1 to 
times 34.2, and then divide by one times one, that's one. So this answer is 34.2 grams of sucrose. Ooh, if this question appears on the exam, you only get partial credit. Why? Well, what's it asking? It's asking how many grams do you need to prepare? Well, it is just asking. It is just asking grams. Maybe the question might say, describe how to prepare. So read the question carefully. I should have done that first time. The question does read, how many grams of sucrose do you need to prepare? And this answer does completely answer this question. So yes, you do get full credit. But what I intended to, me, to say is that on the sample test, you'll, you might see a different a question worded differently. Um, on the sample question, it might actually say this, describe how to prepare one liter of 0 0.1 molar sucrose solution. In which case you have to do this calculation and then you'd have to say, well, mix 34.2 liters of sucrose with, well, I need the total volume of the solution to be one liter. So what's gonna happen if I add one liter of water to these 34 grams of sucrose? It's gonna overfill. What you need to do is put the sucrose in there first and then fill it to the one liter mark. If the container was empty, filling it up to the one liter mark would be exactly one liter of water. But if you have 34 grams of sucrose taking up space, yeah, you're gonna use less than a liter. So that's a key. So if the question says describe how, keyword describe, tell me how to do it in the lab, then what you need to do is mix 34.2 grams of sucrose with enough water for a one liter solution. You have to add enough water. It's gonna be less than one liter. How much? Well, use a measuring device. Maybe a Neurlemeyer flask, maybe a graduated cylinder. Somehow, well, not Neurlemeyer flask, sorry, a volumetric flask. More on that if you go in the lab. Cool. This is enough information to give you full credit on my exam. Mix 34.2 grams sucrose with enough water to make or for a one liter solution. <clears throat> okay, so what did we just spend a whole bunch of time on? On the chemist's preferred method for measuring concentration, molarity. Okay. If you're not a chemist, or even if you are, maybe there's another situation where you might not prefer moles per liter as your measurement of concentration. Let's say you're making aspirin tablets and you have to report how much aspirin is present per tablet. Well, the aspirin is a solid, the tablet is a solid, so why don't you just weigh them? That would, that's what is convenient. Why even deal with molar mass and convert the moles? Yeah, if you just have to report how much aspirin in grams there are per tablet, you could use this equation. It's called the mass mass percent. It's also called the weight weight percent. And it's, you know, mass mass would be M divided by M and weight weight would be weight divided by, I'm sorry, W divided by W. And I should have put a 100 here, darn it. Well, now we have the correct equation. So second way of measuring concentration is to figure out how many grams of your solute is present divide by how many grams of solution, divide the two and then multiply it by 100 to get a percentage. That gives you the mass mass percent, sorry, mass mass percent, or the weight weight percent. And I've seen it written like this too. So I am not gonna be picky. Some of you might be saying, wait, a tablet? Is that really a solution? There's no water. Remember, the definition of a solution is just simply the mixture of any two substances. So yeah, technically it's a solution. You got all the binding agents, starch, whatever makes up a tablet of aspirin plus the pure aspirin mixed in there. But it can also be an aqueous solution, like in the sample problem here. Hey, let's calculate the mass mass percent of a solution containing five grams of table salt and five grams of water. I'll let you Think about that. 
And if you're not careful, you might say, well, five grams of solute is my five grams of salt. Five grams of solution, did you accidentally put five in the denominator? Because the solution is solute plus a solvent, right? The solution is the total. And unfortunately, this is where you can get tricked in some of the homework problems or even on the exam, yikes. Read carefully so you don't get tricked on the exam. It's telling you the solvent and the solute. And it's up to you to figure out, hey, solution is where you add these together. So grams of solute divided by grams of solution, that's the proper equation, times 100. Well, the solute is this, five grams of NaCl, if you wanna put in the molecules. The solution is the five grams of NaCl plus the five grams of water. That's the total weight of the entire thing, the solution. And then that's gonna equal five over 10, oops, sorry, times 100, times 100. <laughs> five divided by 10 is 0. 0.5 times 100 is 50%. And you know what? That makes sense, right? It's a 50-50 mixture, five grams of salt, five grams of water, it's half and half. Yeah, so it's a 50% solution. <clears throat> cool, all right, that's two of five ways of measuring things. Um, what if you're not reporting the concentration of aspirin tablets? Maybe you're dissolving stuff in solution, in an aqueous solution. Now it's easier to measure the volume. Still multiplying by 100. <laughs> so there's something called mass volume percent or the weight volume percent. And that's simply, hey, how many grams of solid do you have? Divide by the milliliters of solution. So grams over milliliters times 100. And again, solution, the total. Do I have a sample problem with this? I do. Okay, what's the percent mass volume of a, of a mixture containing 20 milliliters of, ooh, solution, good, and five grams of salt? So just use your equation. Now you have to remember that. Right? So you're being asked, what is the M divided by V? It's up to you to remember. Oh, yeah, that means mass of what? Solute. The slash means divide. The V means volume of what? Solution, the total. And then we need a percentage. That will help remind you you need to multiply by 100. So I'm not going to give you this equation. You should know that you can break down the problem, percent M divided by V, into the equation that you need. And then it's up to you to remember the mass should be in grams. So if they get tricky and say milligrams here, you need to convert the grams. If they say liters here, you need to convert the milliliters. So it's grams divided by milliliters. And thankfully, the problem does have the proper units. Five grams of solute, the thing being dissolved. Divided by the total volume of the solution is 20 milliliters times 100. Let's see, five, let's see. If I multiply both top and bottom by five, that's kind of cool. Um, my calculator is not here, so I'm doing this on my head. Five times 20 is 100. And then the 100s will cancel out. So five times five is 25. Why does that not look right? because I just can't think. Yeah, that's a correct, that's a correct answer. It's 25%. Five of 20, it's 25%, quarter of the solution. Yay. And um, yeah, that's it. Anything else? No, we're good. Again, oh, I, I guess I wanted to point out, this is different from moles per liter. This is different by, by mass, mass percent. It's all about convenience. Here we're told what the milliliter volume was, so just use those units. <clears throat> That's the third way of reporting concentration. I think the fourth way is up at the top on the right. Fourth way. Well, we had mass, mass percent, mass volume percent. So, hey, why not volume, volume percent? 
Again, it's convenient. Um, in the wine and beer industry, that's how they report the amount of alcohol in those alcoholic beverages and beer and wine. It's like, well, alcohol is a liquid. The wine or beer is a liquid. So <clears throat> let's just measure their volumes, divide it, and then multiply it times 100. Okay, I keep remembering that percentage in here, Dennis. Thanks. All right, so the sample problem is, hey, calculate the volume, volume percent of a 20 milliliter of an alcohol of 20 milliliters of an alcoholic beverage. Okay, so that's the total, 20 milliliters of the alcohol beverage that actually contains one milliliter of ethanol. So you want the volume of the solute all over the volume of the solution times 100. So what's the volume of the solute? That's the alcohol. Um, the chemical name for alcohol in beer and wine is ethanol. So we're gonna have one milliliter and that's the proper units. We want milliliters divided by milliliters. And then the total volume, well, the whole alcoholic beverage is 20 milliliters. And we multiply that times 100. Let's see if I cancel this, this is five. So that's a 5% solution. You can get your calculator out if you don't believe me. Um, so that's what you're gonna see on bottles. Here's a little bottle of Chardonnay. I just Googled wine labels and found this. That was kind of cool. So I zoomed in on it so you could see it. So here, yeah, um, this is interesting. It's kind of written over, but right underneath here, it says it's a 750 milliliter bottle. And they're telling you how much alcohol by percent by volume. It's a volume, volume percent. So the amount of alcohol in that bottle of Chardonnay, Chardonnay is 13.5%. Um, how many milliliters of pure ethanol is in this bottle? Hmm. Let's think about it a little bit. The total volume is 750. The percentage of alcohol is 13.5. So simply multiply them together. 13.5% times 750 milliliters. That should give you the answer. And I really do need the calculator for that one. Um, here's another idea is you could say, um, well, what are the units of concentration? It's a volume volume percent. So you could say volume, volume percent is defined to be um, the milliliters of solute divided by the milliliters of solution times 100. There's another way of solving the problem. Remember this definition and then put in your numbers. Well, what is the volume, volume percent? 13.5. What is the volume of solute? Uh, that's what we want. Maybe that's your X. What is your milliliters of solution? That's 750. The whole bottle contains 750 milliliters. And then it's times 100. Do some math here. Um, maybe what you want to do, I don't know, is divide both sides by 100. Divide by 100. And that cancel, let's see, that cancels out the percent sign and takes 13.5 to 0 0.135. That's milliliters there if you can't read my handwriting. And then what do you do? Let's multiply both sides by 750. And we'll stop right here and 750 times 0.015. You need to convert this number to um, a decimal by dividing by 100. And it turns out this equation and that equation are exactly the same. That's good. We got two ways of solving this problem. They both work. So I'll find my calculator. Got my phone handy. Good. We got 0.135 times 750. I got 101. Um, how many significant figures here? Well, there's probably only two sig figs in this bottle, but let's say there's three. 
So 101 milliliters is this, you know, point, you know, 750 times 0 0.13, 0 0.135 rather, times 750. That's how many milliliters of pure ethanol is contained in that bottle of wine. This is interesting down here. If you see alcoholic beverages reporting the proof, that's trying to tell you how much alcohol is present. The higher the proof, the more potent it is, the stronger the beverage, the more ethanol is present. So I found this bottle of vodka on the internet, at least the label anyways. And if you zoom in on this part, it says right here, it's 40% alcohol by volume, 40%. The way you calculate the proof is you double it. So 80 proof, 100% um, ethanol, 100% alcohol, I'll double that is 200 proof. Weird, I don't know where proof came from, but that's how it's defined. That's our fourth way of measuring concentration. Fifth way, um, this is convenient. When you have tiny amounts dissolved in your aqueous solution or whatever solution, you can report parts per million. It is like a weight, weight percent, gram solute divided by gram solution, but there's so few solutes, you multiply the whole thing by a million, and that's how you report it, followed by ppm. So here's an example. Um, calculate the concentration in units of ppm for a 10 kilogram solution. So we've got this huge 10 kilogram solution, and someone sprinkled in a few crystals of salt. <laughs> so tell me how many salt molecules, sodium chloride, not salt molecules, rather, how many? I want parts per million. What's a part per million of salt in this huge container of solution, right? So we're gonna sprinkle in 20 milligrams from the salt shaker and go in here and dissolve. That's not gonna be very salty at all, very dilute. But hey, you can do this. Just follow the procedure or the formula, really. Um, how many grams of solute do we have? Oh, not so nice. We actually have milligrams, so we need to convert. So what do I want? I want grams. What do I know? 20 milligrams. Find a conversion factor that cancels out the milligrams and changes them into grams. That's one you should know. A milli, like a millipede, does it really have a thousand legs? I don't know. Anyways, has a lot. Milli, milli means a thousand. So a thousand of these little milligrams will add up to one gram. And your calculator 20 divided by a thousand means slide the decimal place over three. And there we got 0 0.020 grams of the solute, the sodium chloride, this thing being dissolved. And then the whole thing, the whole solution, darn it, it's not in grams, it's in kilograms. So what do I want? I want grams of solution. What do I know? I got 10 kilograms. Find conversion factor that gets rid of the kilograms and changes them into grams. Kilograms, a big, massive object. It's going to take a thousand of these little grams to equal one kilogram. Now the kilograms cancel out. 10 times 1,000 is, well, 10,000. Cool. Oh, maybe we'll sneak it up here. And now the part per million part per million is equal to the number of grams of solute. That's this number here, 0 0.020 grams times a million parts per million. So <laughs> multiply by a million divided by how many grams of solution? I got 10,000 grams. Okay, multiply that all out. I did it earlier and I got two, two ppm. And that's convenient, right? Instead of having all these decimal places, if you didn't, you know, didn't multiply by a, a million, you have, you know, what is that? Point zero 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 two five zeros in a two. That's inconvenient. So PPM is a very convenient. You got a nice whole number here. And then you just have to remember, wait, that's only two for every million, two grams for every million grams. That's not very much. This is very dilute. Trace amounts. And PPM is convenient for, let's say, water analysis. So, didn't I cut and paste it? 
No. Um, let's go to the website then. That's where I left it. I went to um, the Brentwood um, City, Brentwood City website, I think. <laughs> and uh, they actually report their water quality tests on the web. So here it is. And then I zoomed in on the PDF file. Let me make sure it's sharing the screen properly. And so if you're curious about the water supply in Brentwood, well, I live here. So yes, I'm kind of interested. Over here, let's see if I can mark up the screen. There we go. Uh, the PPM of copper found in our well water. There's too many things in the way here. Let's see, the action level means if it's above 1.3 PPM means, hey, that's hazardous. The amount detected, 90th percentile, that's the measurement of their test, it was only 0.12 PPM. So that's good. It's, the state mandate is you gotta keep your water supply safe by having less than 1.3 PPM of copper and Brentwood's doing a good job. At least our well water, wherever we're getting the water from is 0.12, smaller number, but in PPM, so it's really tiny. How about lead? Lead is really toxic. Wait, the M changed to a B. So we didn't talk about that, but what do you think the B stands for? If M stands for a million, B stands for a billion. Right, so we don't want any lead. So we want trace amounts. It turns out that the state says it's safe as long as our water has less than 15 parts per billion. That is a pretty tiny amount of lead. And it looks like we detected 1.4 parts per billion. So there is a tiny amount of lead in, in, our, in, our, wall, in our water. Um, but at least it's much less than the state mandate. Technically safe to drink, but you could you decide, right? Yeah, maybe I'll pour my tap water through the Brita filter and get rid of that lead and that copper. Um, anyways, got a bunch of parts per million measuring other quantities in our water. This is very convenient for water analysis since water is mainly pure water, but it does have some things dissolved in it at very low concentrations. Okay, that's enough for now. I will see you in the next video.